Today is Wednesday, May 11. I'm Pastor Anthony, and this is Wilderness Wanderings. Today our text comes from Psalm 7. God is a righteous judge, a God who displays his wrath every day. If he does not relent, he will sharpen his sword, he will bend and string his bow. He has prepared his deadly weapons, he makes ready his flaming arrows. Whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment. Whoever digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit they have made. The trouble they cause recoils on them. Their violence comes down on their own heads. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will sing of the promises of his name. I will sing the promises of the name of the Lord Most High. That's Psalm 7, verses 11 through 17. This Psalm 7 is another real good example of the deeply rooted faith of the Psalms, that takes God and evil seriously, and that finally rests in submission to God and his justice. At the beginning of this psalm, David brings his case before God, his refuge, by saying, Arise, Lord, in your anger, awake, my God, decree justice, let the Lord judge the peoples, vindicate me, Lord, according to my righteousness, according to my integrity, O Most High. It's verses 6 through 8, just before our reading. But David also leaves room for his own presumption of innocence to be overturned by the God who is judge, by saying in verses 3 through 5, If I have done this and there is guilt on my hands, if I have repaid my ally with evil or without cause have robbed my foe, then let my enemy pursue and overtake me. So here we have a picture of how the faith of the Psalms understood God's wrath and judgment to be enacted practically, especially through the final verses of the psalm that I have included in our reading today. God's deadly weapons of wrath are displayed, says David, not in activity, but in passivity. God enacts his wrathful judgments by allowing the one who has dug a pit to fall into it, by allowing the trouble one has caused to recoil on them, and by allowing the violence one has committed to come down on their own heads. Whoever is pregnant with evil conceives trouble and gives birth to disillusionment, says David. The fact that God does not save from these calamities of one's own making is the evidence that God has passed judgment. I've been struck often in these last years by how many biblical narratives in the Old Testament and the New portray this exact movement of God's judgment a judgment and wrath enacted not by the addition of punishment, but by the removal of presence. The narrative of the Ark of the Covenant we preached through from 1 Samuel earlier this year is an excellent example. The people wish to fight their battles on their own, and so God lets them, and it doesn't turn out well. Our conception of hell and final judgment fits, fits this picture too. In 2 Thessalonians 1, Paul writes that those who were shutting the Christians of Thessalonica out of society for their faith in Jesus would themselves be shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, which would be their destruction. C.S. Lewis puts it the same way as he writes, There are only two kinds of people in the end, those who say to God, Thy will be done, and those to whom God says in the end, Thy will be done. This is far from the picture of an angry, vengeful God that we catch on first blush when reading Psalm 7 or any number of other passages in the Bible. It is a God who sounds rather more just. A God who does not step in to keep troublesome people from receiving the trouble that they seek, but also a God who actively grants salvation and mercy for those who seek to find salvation and mercy in him. So, like David, let us be exactly those sorts of people, the ones who seek their salvation in God, who is a just judge and our refuge. As you journey on, go with the blessing of this God. 
May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing, once again, into our doors.